Hi there. So today what we're going to do is, um, so I have this power uh, supply, which is an Aztec LPS42. It's a um, AC input, um, DC output uh, power power supply. It's uh, five volt at 11 amps. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, since this power terminal is um, something that I don't have um, handy on me, so what I'm going to do is um, replace it with something that I have on hand, um, such that I can get some uh, cables and such connected to this. So um, apparently, this uh, power terminal that comes standard with um, the LPS42 is um, some type of Molex connector. And what I happen to have handy are these um, JST terminals. Uh, so these are um, JST VH terminals, I believe. So I'm going to try to see if I can get this um, and replace this terminal with one of these uh, JST VH terminals. It turns out that um, this Molex terminal, um, the pin pitch between the pins is uh, 3.96 millimeters, I believe. And it just turns out that the uh, JST VH terminals have the exact same pin pitch. So I should be able to um, take this out and put this in instead. All right, so there's one challenge to this. Um, as you can see, there's only two pins on this uh, terminal. Um, one is for the um, live and the other is for neutral. And you can see that there's a um, open hole here where there would be, there would be one extra pin. Um, if you look at the back of the circuit board, um, so here is where the terminal is. You can see that there's no hole for um, where that missing pin is supposed to go. But the VH terminal that I have is, um, there's three pins. So obviously, I'm not going to be able to fit this into here without a little bit of um, extra work. So yeah, since we can't fit this VH uh, terminal directly into here because there's a lack of uh, there's no space for this center pin to go through, what I ended up doing was that um, I actually made a actually uh, modified one of those uh, VH terminals to be something like this. What I ended up doing was um, I heated the center pin uh, with um, a cigarette lighter, warmed it up, and yanked that center pin right out. And this way, we should be able to replace this terminal, this Molex terminal, with one of these GSTVH terminals. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Here's a little extra that came with the um, power supply. Oh yes, by the way, this um, power supply um, is looks to be used, and it probably was in some kind of uh, industrial equipment or something, and this, I'm guessing, is not um, something that's included when you buy one of these, um, uh, this Aztec power supply. Anyway, um, so let's see. What I'm going to try to do is uh, desolder these um, two points and put this in instead. Well, desolder these two points, get this ter get this terminal out, then replace it with uh, one of the VH terminals. Not this one, but the one with the center pin missing. So first of all, I'm probably, probably going to have to um, add a little bit of leaded solder to this to get it um, warmed up and melted because um, I, I noticed that when people try to desolder these um, ROHS OK non-leaded solder, um, I've seen people having trouble trying to get this desoldered with, uh, without using solder. So I'm just going to add some leaded solder to this to you know, encourage that solder to, solder to melt. So I'm going to try to go ahead and do that. So first of all, um, there's a little challenge. So these are two points that I need to desolder. Uh, there's a little bit of a gunk here, along with this little um, plastic. 
well, it kind of feels like polycarbonate or something, but um, polycarbonate plastic uh, tab or something. But anyway, this little tab here is going to get in the way. Um, I might need to take it off, and I'm definitely going to have to take that gunk off before I can get to uh, desoldering that point. So I'm going to try to get that going. So I'm going to try to get that gunk off somehow. Mm. Yeah. A little better. I if I can get this tab out like this. Yep, that wasn't hard. Just use a little bit of duct tape to try to get the leftover gunk off. Alright, so that plastic tab is pulled out and um, most of the gunk has been taken away, so hopefully I'll be able to um, desolder these things. Alright, so what I'm going to try to do is um, try to get these um, two points down here uh, desoldered so this terminal will come out and I, then I'll be able to replace it with the one that I want. Um, all right, so I'm heating up my soldering iron, and um, as you can see, I have my fume extractor ready. So I guess it's a pretty good thing to have a fume extractor, especially because um, solder contains a bunch of um, nasties, especially heavy metals and stuff, um, especially leaded solder. It's going to obviously have lead in it. And um, I, be I guess um, lead accumulates in your body over time, so um, in the long run, you could end up with uh, lead poisoning and uh, neurological damage and all that stuff. So I don't want to get that. So I've been watching um, Lewis Rossman, who's a, um, a Mac repair specialist in New York City. He has a pretty popular YouTube channel. So I've been watching this, his stuff, and he always talks about having a fume extractor and trying to avoid getting all the um, nasty um, solder smoke and such into his lungs. So um, this is one of the things I never knew that, that it really existed. Uh, because um, the people that I've seen soldering never use these kind of things. Um, so this is something that I thought would be worth um, getting. It's not a real expensive unit. I don't really remember how much it was, but it's not one of those um, heavy-duty um, industrial use ones, but something that can be just used in um, uh, for hobby use. It wasn't too expensive, I remember. Anyway, um, it smells like my iron's warming up. Yeah, it kind of is. All right, so I guess we'll get started. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in um, to where I'm going to be working in. All right, which is going to be right up here. So I'm just going to try to see if I can just uh, directly warm up these... Um, point over here and see if it melts. I doubt it. Without um, taking my iron or anything, see if it will be able to melt that point. Well, it looks like I'm picking off that. Oh, no, it's kind of melting. Oh yeah, it does kind of melt. Oh yeah, it melts. I'm a little bit surprised, but it's um, actually melting. So I guess you can't really see that. And of course, I didn't turn the fume extractor on. Let's turn that on. All right, um, with the fume extractor on, I don't have to smell that. I don't have to inhale all that nasties. So yeah, let's see if I can start desoldering. It actually is melting. Huh, that's nice. Maybe you don't have to use that. Well, it's kind of hardening up already. That's not good. So I'm gonna see, um, if I can get a little bit of um, solder, uh, lead-free, uh, leaded solder, on um, the lead-free solder, and see if it'll help um, melt stuff. Ooh, yeah! Look at that solder smoke go right into the fuel extractor. 
Ooh, yeah. Can you see that? I can. I like that. It's melting. It's not melting, but I can't get both melted at the same time to get the um, terminal to go out. How am I supposed to do this? Hmm. Hmm. Let me pause and think for a second. You know, I just had a real um, bad realization. So my bad realization is, if there's some glue or something between the um, PCB and the uh, bottom of the terminal over here, um, just heating these points might not um, actually get this terminal to come off. That would not be nice. Then I'm stuck. Oh, by the way, this is probably my first time desoldering these, um, uh, what you call it, pre-soldered points. So if it looks nasty to you, um, this is part of my learning process, so please bear with me. Oh, by the way, I'm changing orientation just to make it so it's easier for me to work, work with, which is probably the number one thing to be um, thinking about when we do these kind of things. And the food start, food start to work, so that's good. Oh yeah, good. Um, yeah, if I, while I'm heating um, this uh, point over here, if I push down on that um, terminal, it seems to be lifting off, so if I keep doing this, I, I'm hoping I would be able to get that terminal off. Yep, it's coming off. Yeah, that's good. Yep, came right off. Lucky me. So yeah, that's my first desoldering of the, um, the circuit board. Yay. All right. So I guess I'll try to clean this, um, uh, uh -huh. see, here we go. Before I clean it, here, ah, shoo, it's hot. So here's the first piece of component that I've ever desoldered off a PCB. And of course it won't focus, all right. Yeah, so let's try cleaning this gunk off with some solder wick. Shoot. Yeah, don't hold the wick while you're doing this. That's not smart. Wow, this is actually pretty fun. Most of the soldering technique I'm using right now, I've actually learned right off on YouTube, so... Yeah, YouTube's a pretty, um, whatchamacallit, educational medium, I think. Kind of like a monkey, monkey see, monkey do kind of thing, but... Yeah, it seems like I'm getting somewhere, so... Definitely worth something. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it might not be the cleanest desoldering job, but but at least, yeah, yeah, it's pretty nasty, but at least it's desoldered as you can see. Nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is actually get the um, JSDVH terminal onto the spot that is vacated now. So it turns out I can just push this right in and it'll snap right in. Well, it was snapping right in, but it goes right in, just as expected. So that's good. So the idea is that I will have a um, one of these connectors go right into the terminal, and go right into the terminal, if I can show it correctly, properly. Um, it just snap right in like that. This way I can just connect um, the AC input like this. So that's probably a good thing. All right, so next step is to actually get this um, terminal soldered onto the power supply PCD. Get that going. All right. So I forgot to warm up the soldering iron. I 
so yeah, this is going smoother than I thought, actually. And hopefully, this will work out just fine. Alright, maybe the iron's warm enough now. Seems like it's getting warm. Enough. I guess I'll get started. Um, hope that terminal stays in this place. I'll get some solder on the terminal first. Oh, it's coming off. I'm gonna try to hold it up from the bottom so that the terminal doesn't move as I'm trying to solder this thing somehow. Okay, just propped it up with some um, leftover terminals I had. Oh, and it's, the iron's probably a little hot, but let's get going. Just checking if it's flush. It looks good. Alright, time to solder. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah, the solder's flowing nice, nicely. A little more. Just a little more. So yeah, I guess it's not great, but. It's not great, but it's not too bad either. Uh, I might a little. I might fix this up a little bit off camera, but it's probably all right. Mm -hmm. I guess that's okay. Looks similar to the other mound of solder around that point, so I'm just gonna call it okay. So yeah, that's pretty much what I hope to get accomplished in this video. So I was able to replace the um, Molex uh, terminal with this uh, JST terminal so that I can um, use uh, connectors that I have handy to um, connect the AC input. Um, yeah, so. That's pretty much it for this video. It actually wasn't that difficult, and I think it was pretty fun. So yeah, um, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you can give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time.